Today's video is a review of the City Row Go Max Rower, available on their site for $2,195. This rower features a 19.5 inch built-in touchscreen with high fidelity speakers for a fully immersive workout. The screen swivels up to 30 degrees for the perfect view on and off the rower. It has a total of 20 watts of speaker power and you can also connect your headphones via Bluetooth. This rower can easily fit in any room. It stores in less space than an end table. And it can go from in use to away in less than 20 seconds. This rower can also be stored in an upright position, but for me, since I do have two kids at the ages of two and four years old, I probably won't be storing it in the upright position, but that is a nice feature to have. This product has the original water flywheel from the industry leader in water resistance, Water Rower. You can feel the rush of water with every stroke for the most realistic rowing experience. Its frame is crafted from sustainable American ash wood with black powder coated aluminum. Physically, I think the rower is very aesthetically pleasing. I love the dark wood accents. And it also has a very sleek look and is definitely not an eyesore in a room. I have my rower in the bedroom across the way from my Peloton. Its dimensions when assembled are 85 inches in length and 45.25 inches in height. Its stored dimensions are 24 inches in depth, 22.25 inches in width, and 85 inches in height. The unit itself weighs 75 pounds when dry and 112 pounds when filled with water. The user weight recommendation is 375 pounds. This rower arrives fully assembled It comes with a five-year warranty on the frame, a three-year warranty on non-electric components such as a seat, clutch, or tank, and a one-year warranty on the tablet. So this rower arrived with a white glove delivery service, which was really great, and honestly, the people were in and out of my house within 10 to 15 minutes. As mentioned before, the rower does arrive fully assembled. There's nothing for you to do on your end, aside from filling the water tank with distilled water. For me personally, I purchased five gallons of distilled water just to make sure I have enough. While this rower is a bit pricey, if you prefer to use your own screen, perhaps you can consider the Classic Rower, which retails on their site for $1,495, $600 less than this model. The Classic Rower doesn't require an outlet, unlike this rower, and lets you use your own device or cast to your TV for an even bigger format. The City Row Go has a monthly subscription cost of $29 per month or $358 per year. This subscription includes access to unlimited classes, the Just Row feature, data streaming, and more. It also allows for unlimited user profiles on the rower, which is a really great option for everyone in your household. And you will also have unlimited access on the City Row Go mobile app. If you're interested in trying their monthly subscription out for yourself, there is a free 14-day trial. So it's currently one o'clock in the afternoon. I'm just about to start my first rowing workout. So right now I have the class tab selected. They have various workouts. They have high intensity ones, endurance, strength, yoga, mobility. Today I'm gonna do an endurance workout. 
They also have various filters on the right here. So I'm gonna do one that has just rowing, level beginner, duration of 20 minutes. And let's just go ahead and try this one right here. This class focused mostly on form, instruction for beginners, and interval training. So I just finished my first rowing class. I did a 20 minute endurance ride with the instructor Bakari Williams. In this class, they had a bunch of intervals and there was also a minute or two of stretching within the first five minutes. Since this is a beginner class, Bakari Williams was talking about form quite a bit and he was also talking about split time, which is a new concept for me. I like how you can easily vary the speed and intensity of the rower based on how much force and effort you put into it. There's no resistance knob as there would be with an indoor spin bike, for example. I also love the sound of the water within the rowing machine. Here are some metrics that they display at the end of the class. They talked about the split time quite a few times in this class. So for distance, I went a total of 2,900 meters. My split time was two minutes and 19 seconds. So this is what the instruction manual looks like. The first step is to of course fill your water tank. Also included is a siphon water pump for filling your water tank. Also included are some water purification tablets. So I'm working on setting up my rower. The first step is to of course fill the tank. To do so, I'll need the rower in an upright position, so I'm just referencing the manual on how to do that. So we're gonna go step by step and store the rower upright. The first step is to flip the tablet back so the screen is facing upwards. The next step is to lift the mounting bracket latch while holding the arm. So this is what we have so far. I've lifted the mounting latch right here. I've pressed down on the arm of the machine and there is this little latch here to hold everything in place. So as you can see, if I try to lift it, it doesn't budge. The last step is to stand the rower up And here we have it. The rower is now stored in its upright position. As you can see, it goes quite high up onto the ceiling. This is how big it looks like in comparison to my room. Realistically, I don't think it takes up that much space, so it does make it a great space saving option. Of course, I'm not sure if you'd obviously want to store this if you have young kids around the house, but if it's just all adults, I think it should be fine. So now that I have my rower stored in an upright position, it's time to fill the water tank. So here is the water rower level gauge sticker. Right here we have the calibration level. Here is the max level. So we're gonna be filling it to this level. So upon first glance, it may be difficult to see where the stopper is to fill the tank, but if you look straight ahead, it's actually this portion right here. So I'm going to have to curve around to reach it on the other side. So here is the rubber stopper. I'm going to remove it. And there we go, that's where we're gonna be filling the water tank. So here I have five gallons of distilled water, so hopefully this should be enough, we'll wait and see. Distilled water is supposed to be perfect for small appliances, and this water is purified by steam distillation. So the first step is to turn this knob clockwise on the siphon pump to close it, so right now it's already tightened. So the next step is to insert the lower part of the tube into the tank, and here we have the pump portion feeding into my bottle. They also recommend positioning the water source above the tank stopper hole, which would be right here, so realistically the water source should be at this height. So let's just go from here and squeeze this a couple times and see how long it takes to fill the tank. So now I'm going to try to lift my water source above that tank stopper hole and see if that speeds up the process. Hey. 
So this is what it looks like right now. I have lifted my water source above that stopper hole. And as you can see, it's actually naturally draining on its own. Of course, I could still pump and speed up the process, but this is looking pretty good actually. While I'm doing this, I wanna be careful that the spout remains in the water tank at all times, because obviously I don't want water spraying all over the rowing machine. So I just added one gallon of water, and this is the water level that it's at. I would say it took about five minutes to get to that point. So for this process, I would recommend being a little bit patient. Here we have two gallons in the tank. Here's three gallons down. Here's four gallons in, and we're just below the calibration level. So four and a half gallons later, we perfectly met the calibration level setting. So the water tank is filled to a little under halfway, I would say. So that took roughly 15 to 20 minutes to fill the tank in its entirety. In total, I used nearly four and a half gallons of distilled water. Using the siphon pump made it quite simple, and I do recommend lifting your water source above the stopper hole. That will definitely assist you and use gravity to your favor. So now I'm going to set up the rower from its collapsed position. The first step is to lift the mounting bracket latch to its unlocked position. So that latch is located on the back of the rower right here. We're just going to lift it to the unlocked position. The next step is to unlock the latch portion underneath the tablet right here. Once we do so, it extends back into place. From there, we can relock the mounting bracket latch. Flip the tablet to the ready to use position. Turn it on and you're all ready to go. Setting up the rower from its collapsed position took me just under a minute, but I'm sure as I get the hang of it, it'll be much faster. They do advertise that it takes 20 seconds to set up or take down the rower. I'm obviously careful the first time around because I don't want to pull something too hard or pull it the wrong way. I did follow the instructions step by step, and if you do that, you should be fine. So this is what the water tank looks like when it's filled with water. This is my first time setting it up since having water in the tank. So now for my overall thoughts on this product. Currently, the GoMax rower is on sale for $1,945, and while it isn't cheap, it's definitely a well-made and beautifully designed machine. Working out with an instructor via video is a game changer and so much more motivating than just trying to challenge yourself on your own. The monthly subscription fee comes down to $1 a day if you use this rower daily and there are a bunch of 20-minute classes in their library so it is definitely a doable goal. I would say there is a small learning curve to using a rower in general but if you follow and practice your form with their beginner instructional videos, you should be fine. I do love the sound of the rushing water as you exert effort. It has a natural feel and a soothing motion. I've tried non-water rowers before and they do not quite compare. Overall, I highly recommend this rower if you want a high-end rowing experience and an elegant machine that looks great in any room. I'd like to say a big thanks to the team at City Row for gifting me this rower. I have thoroughly enjoyed it and can't recommend it enough. So anyways, that should do it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to comment down below. What are your thoughts on this rower? Do you like the fact that this rower comes with the HD touchscreen? Or would you prefer their classic rower without the touchscreen and just stream it from your phone or tablet? With that being said, I'll see you in my next video. Thanks for watching.